It's never too early for an NBA mock draft, am I right? And Bleacher Report just put out their way too early lottery mock, and we're going to be reacting to it today. And the reason why I wanted to record this video is because I wanted to talk about these prospects a little bit before the season starts. Because my first mock draft, like official 1.0, will come out right before the college season starts. I did do a way too early mock draft right after this past 2023 NBA draft, but those ones are always a crapshoot. You're trying to predict something that's going to happen in a year from now. I just wanted to make that video too, because it's always fun to look back on. It. Like, I'll be reacting to my first ever 2024 mock draft in a year from now. So, yeah, this was written by Jonathan Wasserman. He is their top draft analyst. I will leave a link to the article in the description below if you want to take a look at it yourself. So, they are predicting the Washington Wizards to get the number one overall pick. And it's just crazy to say, like, or just see that they're going to be drafted. <laughs> from the year 2005. That's when they were born. 2005. I am getting old, man. I remember when I found out like the first players that were younger than me, like my sophomore year of college a few years ago that I was older than. So Ron Holland, top guy, G League Ignite. He's going to be so much fun to watch this year. He originally committed to Texas, decommitted, went to the G League Ignite. Sorry, Horns fans. Um, but hey, they got a huge win over Alabama the other day. But yeah, they're predicting the Washington Wizards to land the number one overall pick. I mean, they did just trade away Bradley Beal and Kristaps Off Porzingis this offseason, so that can 100% happen and Ron Holland would be a huge get it really Holland is very versatile he could be the two three or the four for any team at the number one spot so it's not like that you aren't going to take him because you already have a center or you already have a point guard no he's a true wing he could play three different positions he's going to be a really crafty score at the next level he's pretty efficient at that as well he's uh he can finish at the rim I like his ball handling and I think he's also going to be a good defender one thing I do want to watch from him this year in the G League Ignite is his jump shot how well is it going to progress throughout this season and are we going to see him maybe be a consistent shooter uh in the G League so yeah playing good competition over there. He right now is like the consensus 1-1. One, one. I haven't seen like a mock or any analyst saying that they have maybe somebody else that we'll get to in probably a little bit as the number one pick. It's kind of all been Ron Holland. So number two, Portland Trailblazers. This is probably thinking that, yeah, Damian Lillard will get traded. And Matas Buzelis, who I said also maybe could be in consideration for the number one overall pick. And yeah, he also plays on the same team as Ron Holland, the G League Ignite. The G League Ignite had Scoot Henderson last year. They also had a Leonard Miller last year as well. And they're going to have some good talent this year with Matas Buzelis, Ron Holland, and some others that we may get to in this article. But Buzelis can really be a three-level scorer, six foot ten, and he's basically a shooting guard. He's going to be, I think, one of the better shooters coming out of this class. And I'm really excited to see how his ball handle and kind of just shot creation is going to be this year because that's his main skill set. He's going to be possibly a number one scoring option one day him on the blazers though if we want to talk about this fit is interesting because they do have anthony simons shaden sharp possibly tyler hero in a damian lillard trade return so yeah they may have a ton of positions there but you wouldn't draft for need you draft best player available and that would be monsters booze list there at two uh justin edwards three detroit well that's not justin edwards that's matas buzelis i guess they had a picture mix up there but yeah edwards he is going to be a athletic freak for kentucky this year he may be the first ncaa prospect drafted in this class he's got a high basketball iq i think he's going to be a solid defender this year for kentucky as well i'm going to keep an eye on his perimeter defense because he could be one of the better defenders in this class if he buys in under john calipari and yeah he could be just an eventual three and d guy that just has uber athleticism and that's why he would go in the top five. Him in Detroit, you know what? You could have some fun lineups with him at the three or the four, but could you put a Sore Thompson, Justin Edwards, Jaden Ivey, Cade Cunningham, and maybe Jalen Duran all in the four at once? I think so. That would be fun. And the Pistons, like the Trailblazers and Wizards, and like any team picking in the top five, would go for best player available. We got Tyrese Proctor to Charlotte at four. Okay, I'm just going to come out and say, hate this pick. If you were going to take Scoot Henderson to pair up next to Lamelo Ball, I would not take Tyrese Proctor. I don't think he's going to be a top five player in this class, and I don't think... I would like Charlotte would be the team to do so. I think there's some other prospects like Stephen Castle from UConn, maybe DJ Wagner from Kentucky, Isaiah Collier. How have we not mentioned him from USC? I would rather have over Tyrese Proctor. There's even a chance, maybe Bronny, but I, I don't know. I think maybe that's where I would draw the line. And I do like Tyrese Proctor over Bronny James a little bit going into the season. I do not like the fit for Charlotte, but I don't mind Pro Proctor as a prospect. We got to see him last year at Duke. He's returning for his sophomore year. He's going to be one of the better players in the college season this year. And he's got good basketball IQ, 
good ball vision, and he's got great size, 6'5", so he can be a weak guard uh, that has a good handle. DJ Wagner, another Kentucky Wildcat, like I already talked about. Justin Edwards, DJ Wagner, going to be the point guard for them next season. Like San Antonio, yes, this is a team that could draft a point guard in which is a voted class. Now, I don't think I would have took the bet that they were going to have Isaiah Collier, my point guard one coming into the season, as maybe like not a top two point guard drafted because they have Proctor at number one. They have DJ Wagner at number two. And I do like Wagner as a prospect. I do think he's going to have his inconsistencies this year. And we'll see if teams like the boomer bust prospect in him, but that will come down the line. We have Marco Jackson. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know much about him, so I'm going to be excited to dive into him. He's going to be the Kansas point guard, and he would they would have him go into the Houston Rockets. Is this via the Brooklyn Nets? Because their pick is top four protected, so then it would go to the OKC Thunder. Maybe they aren't really considering picks in this, and it's more talking about the players. But yeah, talking about Marco Jackson has a chance to soar past some other high-profile college prospects with his handle, shot creation, pull-up shooting, and improving playmaking. He's 6'3". He combines positional size, bursts, and a well-rounded skill set for on and off ball offense. Okay, I'm excited to watch them this year. I mean, Kansas is going to be great. They did lose Jalen Wilson, who entered the NBA draft last year, but they did get Hunter Dickinson coming over from Michigan, the top transfer. And yeah, going to keep an eye on Marco Jackson. Number seven, we have Alex Sarr, 2005. It's just crazy to see. Yeah, he could 100% be the top big man drafted. I kind of like a Dave Mara a little bit better because of his playmaking ability, but Alex Sarr is going to project to being an elite rim protector. Seven foot one, this guy gets up there. He's going to have immense upside at the center position. And yeah, we talked about some wings and some point guards. Alex Sarr, just if he is like the clear cut best five, is going to be an auto top 10 pick because of that positional scarcity in this upcoming class. It has its talent at the five spot, maybe even deeper than the 2023 draft because Yes, there was a drop off a little bit after Wemby at the five spot. And we have some that we'll get to like Damar, who I mentioned, I like as my center one at the moment. And then Donovan Klingon, and then some other guys we'll talk to a little bit there. But Isaiah Collier to the Bulls, this would be an amazing pick. I think he's going to be the top point guard drafted and they have him going eight in this mock, which is kind of shocking, but him on Chicago would be great because of the uncertainty with Alonzo Ball. They have a bunch of guards, but none are really their long-term answer. Like as I had assumed move the long-term answer, Javon Carter, Kobe White, None of those guys are really the long-term answer at the number one. So yeah, I would be excited if the Bulls got Isaiah Collier and we'll see if they end up making moves at the deadline. If Levine maybe gets traded, probably not. DeRozan more likely due to his pending free agency. We do have the Utah Jazz selecting Stephen Castle out of UConn. This guy is a freaking stud. They've been listed as a shooting guard. I think he's going to play a little bit more like a point guard because of his size and his ball handling ability. UConn is also going to be loaded this year and we're going to be able to watch this guy play a ton of minutes. Utah is a team in need of a point guard. I don't think Colin Sexton is the long-term answer at the number one spot um, or at the point guard spot. I don't know why I said the number one spot. I don't think Taylor Horn Tucker is a long-term answer there either. I think Sexton, like going back to him, is more of like a projected shooting guard, off-ball guy, not really the lead ball handler playmaker. Uh, and then Donovan Klingon, who they have at number 10, also on UConn. This team just has a boatload of talent. Indiana drafting a center. If you're going to re-up a Miles Turner, don't agree with that. If you think Isaiah Jackson is in line to be that backup five spot, don't love that. I mean, they drafted Jarius Walker. They traded for Obi Toppin. I would still, I still like Klingon. Don't get me wrong, but I think Indiana could also look for another wing. I like Matherin, but maybe not as much as some other people. I think also Jarius Walker does have a lower ceiling than some of these other prospects we see coming into this class that are still available. At 11, we have the San Antonio Spurs selecting Caleb Foster. He's going to be a guard at Duke, incoming freshman. He's a really good dribbler. He's got a pull-up shot to him. We'll see how good of a scorer he is right away coming from over uh, from Oak Hill to Duke. Going to be excited to watch him in this upcoming season. I do like that we have, I think, more collegiate prospects going in the lottery than we did in this past draft because we had a couple overseas guys. Uh, like Bill Coolbally, we had Scoot Henderson in the G League, we had Wemby um, coming over from France, we had the Thompson Twins coming over from the Overtime Elite League, so it's nice to have more kind of NCAA prospects, because it's just fun to watch like the college season, because I watch that more than any European League, or International League, or the G League, and it's going to be fun to watch them and just talk about them throughout the pre-draft process. Uh, number 12, we have Izan, um, or Izan Amansa, who's in the G League Ignite, uh, he's also another G League guy that we're going to talk to here, the main thing about him is his defensive ability, he He's physical inside. He can get rebounds. He's also a great scorer at the rim too. He's somebody that can really see his draft stock elevated because of the potential, because of the raw talent that you can really plug and play in long term. So yeah, I think he's going to get a lot of pre-draft type throughout the season. I thought Leonard Miller was going to get something similar last year, but it could sim like be something similar to what Bilal Koulibaly got um, over in France because his stats weren't the greatest things in the world, but it's really the potential that was there. And that's why Washington used the top 10 pick on him. 13, Kalel Ware, 
Indiana transfer from Oregon, had a very disappointing freshman season last year, and that's why he did transfer. We're going to see how his physicality, his rebounding, his post offensive defense will work out in the Big Ten for Indiana this year. It's a solid program, and I don't love where, like over a Mara, who they do have 14 here to the OKC Thunder, and I think he does have a raw aspect to his game, and he's not going to come over and be elite right away, but I, I would take him over, I think, Donovan Klingon and Kalel Ware at the moment because I do like his playmaking ability. I think he's going to be one of the better passing bigs in the league. I also think he's going to be an elite shot uh, blocker as well. He's seven foot three, so there is some injury kind of scares to that. Uh, somebody with that size and frame coming over, but I do like him over Khalil Ware, and I think over Donovan Klingon as well. So yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I just kind of wanted to hop on and talk prospects with you guys. That's why I love about this channel, because if I'm in the mood to talk about hot takes of the season, I'll do that, or player rankings, or do a quiz, or prospects. I'll do any one of those. So yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Like I said, I'll leave a link to the article in the description below. Let me know what you guys think about this upcoming season maybe any prospects that weren't mentioned here that you think should have been maybe you think Bronny james should have been mentioned let me know in the comments below drop a like if you do like the draft content i love you guys and i'll catch you on the next one peace